Queensland is on the cusp of a mozzie boom. New research shows a 70% rise in mosquito-borne diseases such as dengue and malaria compared with this time last year. Brisbane's southern suburbs and regions across the tropics are seeing the most increasing case numbers. Experts say international students, backpackers and those returning from disease hotspots are behind the surge in cases. And joining me live is Professor Robert Boy, Boy infectious diseases paediatrician. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us. It sounds like some increased statistics there and case numbers. Are we just seeing it from people coming in from overseas and backpackers or does weather play a part in this as well? Well, you're right that a lot of the infections are being brought from overseas, including measles, your previous story. But uh, people can catch malaria overseas and bring it back. It's very uncommon to catch malaria in Australia. It's not really known. But what we do have is a whole bunch of viruses which love the warm and they love the water. And the mosquitoes love both of those as well. Uh, and so um, mosquito-borne diseases uh, are all up and down the east coast of Australia. Uh, Japanese encephalitis used to only be only as far south as Cairns and usually just in the Torres Strait Islands. It's now all the way down uh, to Melbourne, um, and uh, over to South Australia, as is Murray Valley encephalitis. And there's other viruses too that are causing problems for people uh, right up and down the East Coast, especially if they live near water. And mosquitoes uh, can bite water birds and then bite humans, or they can bite pigs and then bite humans. So there's a lot of people who are at risk, but especially those who work outside, people who work in piggeries, uh, people who are doing cleanup or flood uh, in northern New South Wales and other parts of the country. They are exposed to still water and warm water and the mosquitoes love that and they're then biting people who are doing the cleanup. So there's a new way of approaching it to say, um, um, to protect yourself, um, spray up, uh, um, cover up and screen up your 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 windows and um, and your doors. So there's simple ways, but then there's uh, light loose clothing that's long sleeved, which is also helpful. And there's a vaccine for Japanese encephalitis. So people who live uh, especially near piggeries or work with pigs or transport them or vets can all get vaccinated. All right, well, some good advice there, Professor. And, um, you know, some of us can get just a little bit of a mozzie bite and an itch and some can swell. What is the severity and what are some of the, uh, the, the more serious symptoms we need to look out for? Yeah, the truth of the matter is that most people get no symptoms or only mild symptoms, like an itch. Um, and it's only one in a hundred to one in a few hundred people who get it more severely. And the things to really look out for are a headache, a high fever. Um, uh, epileptic fits can sometimes occur. Um, evidence of encephalitis, like a sore neck and vomiting. So they're the things to really look out for. And you can seek medical attention earlier if you're concerned. Uh, but while you're still at home and getting uh, arranging attention, you can keep hydrated, use anti-pyretics that are drugs that reduce fever um, and rest up. But most people get it mildly, but a few get it severely and you can actually get brain damage from encephalitic viruses that affect uh, our brain. And is it like perhaps an allergy type thing? Like are some people more prone to having, you know, these serious illnesses, perhaps like and correct me if I'm wrong, like if you are allergic to bees, for example, is it a similar thing like that or is it not? Well, it's it's a genetic predisposition, but not, not really allergy, but um, your immune system uh, may or may not be attuned to fighting off uh, these, these particular viruses. And there are some very subtle immune defects that make people at particular risk of only one or two different viral infections. And other things make you at risk more generally to viral infection. But it's more at the genetic level. And then, then it's at the exposure level. You have to be in the part of the country where the mozzies are and the mozzies are, are carrying viruses. And traditionally, it used to be only in the north of Australia. But now, with all the rain in the last three years, we've had um, water birds uh, coming from the north to the south and staying there and then spreading to into wallabies, into horses, into pigs. So all sorts of mammals are getting infected and then mozzies bite them and then bite us. Um, so uh, if you're living in the country and you're living near still water, it's really important. But if you're living in the city, there are things like uh, emptying out um, um, pot plants 
so there isn't any still water next to your house. So there are things you can do in the city as well. All right, well, we really appreciate your time and expertise, Robert Boy. Thank you. Pleasure. Good to be with you.